I remain Honorable Emeka Chinedu, member representing, I represent the good people of Ahiazo in the Mr. Federal constituency, Mr. Speaker, and from Imo State. Mr. Speaker, I rise to move a motion on the need to grant automatic employment to first class graduates. The House knows that at the end of every academic year, Nigerian universities, Nigerian universities both government and private owned, produce hundreds of first class graduates, where a huge percentage find it difficult to secure jobs or establish a place to give back to the society or make commiserate input on nation building. The House also notes that graduating in first class in any institution of learning is an indicator of the grade A brain, as the journey to such feat is not only characterized by the smartness or intellect of the graduating student, but riddled with challenges such as superlative effort, resilience, hard work, determination, irrepressible stress, with a strong will that showcases the inability to accept failure in all circumstances. The House therefore regrets that the growing rate at which employable first-class graduates of universities in the country are going jobless or leaving the country in droves after the National Youth Service Corps, while the lower grades whose relations are connected get options of first refusal respect of the growing national concern to get the nation's best brain abroad, abroad leadership and other position. The House is, other, is also aware that the lack of job, job opportunity for first class graduates in, is not just a result of non-preparedness of graduates, since some lucky ones do get the prize for postgraduate scholarship award, skip master's degree to PhD or get instant job opportunities at some universities are magnanimous enough to award their first-class graduates, graduates with automatic employment to becoming assistant lecturers, student lecturers, and so on, in their specific field of learning. The House is there for cognizance of the Presidential Scholarship Award, the Nigerian Federal Government First Class Scholarship Award, that are aimed at reducing the financial burdens on students by assisting the scholar in the payment of institutions' charges charges, fees, and personal maintenance in field of such as medical and surgery education, environmental sciences, and terminal skills, and agriculture. The House is also aware that as recently as a year ago, the University of Lagos offered employment to no fewer than 100 graduates of the university who made first class in various fields of study in the university. Why it is undeniable that there are some firms in the country with defined quality and excellent policies that consider applicants with first class honors before other categories of graduates, which is in line with the global and best practices. The House is further concerned that same job opportunities are not obtainable for first class graduates in the ministries, departments, and agencies, and, and agencies and parastatals, who are by their position as government agencies saddled with the responsibilities of driving the country's economic and infrastructure development. The House is further concerned that the Nigerian inability to leave the status of a developing nation may not be unconnected with the insensitivity and lack of political will of the ruling class and policymakers to introduce a reward system in a way that the best brains will automatically occupy important positions according to their area of competence. Further concerned that according to research, Nigeria has continued to unwittingly give away the her best brains and intellectual to other countries who, by their robust policies on the value system, reward diligence and excellence as, a, as evidence in the way and manner that Nigerians has continued to export her highly rated professionals, such as medical doctors and nurses, who were unable to get jobs within the country and within the country after graduation. Further notes on a recent report by the higher education data expert QS that the single biggest factor that students considered in countries such as United Kingdom, United States, Germany, France, and Australia, China, Canada, when choosing a university, is their, is their chance of landing a good job the country offers when they complete their courses. The House further believes that the first class graduates are mostly needed in all fields of human endeavor, especially in Nigeria, where they can contribute in their areas of competence, such as 
economic planning, manufacturing, small and medium scale enterprise, engineering and infrastructure, etc. The House also believes that such automatic offer of a job for first class graduates will not only be the source of motivation for students in all fields to work harder, but maximizing their potential in, prepared, in preparation for their different economic rules, future leadership position, and untimely, ultimately reduce unemployment while helping to achieve development targets. The House is therefore worried that, irrespective of her ability to produce first class brain at the end of every academic year, Nigeria may not only continue to unwittingly export her best brain to more purposeful countries, but witness a high rate of unemployment and stagnate in her status of a developing nation if nothing is done urgently to establish a reward system for diligence and excellence. The House therefore resolved that, one, all the Federal Ministry of Education to liaise with the relevant government agencies to ensure employment of first class graduates of Nigerian institutions. Two, mandate the Committee on Tertiary Education and Services and um, at Labor and Employment and Productivity to ensure compliance. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Before we put the question, amendment? Yes. Amendment. I represent the good people of Ganye, Dada, Tongo, Maivelo. I'm from Adama State, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this bill is actually... No, motion. This motion, sorry, uh, should have been a discretionary matter. In the spirit of the Constitution, our Constitution says that nobody should be discriminated against. You see, if you make it a motion, and the House have to compare that we should make people with first class get automatic job, Mr. Speaker, you are in Nigeria, that will be crazy for first class. And it will be much better that we identify in which area of this first class are we talking about. Is it in the area of technology? Oh, is this that if I read Hausa, I become first class, I should just be <laughs> given an automatic employment? I agree that somebody who has a first class must be a, one of the best brands within the place. But, Excellency, um, Speaker, we have a lot of people who are also, some people are even second class lower by the circumstance. But, by the Speaker, they could even well be better than first class people. The circumstances that made me to go to school to come out with third class, pass degree, you wouldn't have done. Assuming all other things being equal, I would have come out with first class. So it is not that because people have first class, that's so I want to I, I want to suggest that where it's a good motion, it should not we should not compare. Because even the spirit of constitution says, look, let us not discriminate. So that when our children come out of the school, we only can pay attention to only those who get first class. But what the person with second class no, uh, upper will not be taken. So I think that is something that I feel that we should look at it, Mr. Speaker. I uh, so uh, move, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. And discrimination, the Constitution says you cannot discriminate, but based on it gives you age, sex, religion, and all that. Not that you, you cannot discriminate, or if you want to call it discrimination, on a smart student as opposed to not too smart student. That is not uh, applicable in the Constitution. Uh, discrimination in the Constitution is only based on certain criteria, uh, categories of people, like I said, sex, age, and all of that. But uh, yes, but even uh, beyond that, you've made some good points. Uh, we have to encourage everybody, right? That's what you're saying. Honorable Bangida. Mr. Speaker, this has been a current policy, existing policy, within the federal government of Nigeria since of us in your time. It has been the policy that whoever has first class in the civil service, automatically he gets automatic employment. And the policy has been existent to date. Uh, number two, if you look at the prayers, he's directing his prayers to the Minister of Education. Minister of Education is not responsible for recruiting civil servants into the public service. Number three, if we insist on this, it will encourage academic corruption. It will encourage academic corruption, where everybody will try, even as it is today, we are trying to manage the level of corruption that is existing within the tertiary institution in Nigeria. So we should not encourage academic corruption, because if we insist that anybody who gets first class automatically you get employed, then at every level of the tertiary institution, people will now be pushing people, especially if you have four from five, to cross first class, and you have 4.43. They will say, ah, this is meaning, but let's just push it. So I think the fact that it has been an existing policy now, as it is, 
I don't think we need this motion. Thank you. It's an existing. It's an existing policy. Uh huh. If so goes, how policy. is the existing policy? If, it, if it's if it's the same thing, it's how is the existing policy not pushing corruption? But this one is. No, what I'm saying is that uh, it has been the policy, and just because I went round, if you, if because I had the privilege of discussing with all of the committee members long time ago when the policy was introduced. Some of the major challenges they face across the state because they go around all the states. And you see, there's a limitation. We can only emphasize on the issue of public service. You cannot insist the private sector must employ with first class. Because if, if you have first class, you have to pass through several tests and examinations to confirm whether even to qualification, you can justify it. So I think it has been a policy. I'm not saying uh, uh, the way it is is not encouraging academic corruption, but it's one of the challenges that was faced by the committee that went around the state with regard to those people's first class. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other contributor? Mr. Speaker, as you know, I always support anything that will promote uh, excellence in uh, any sector in Nigeria. If this motion would actually, when subject to the Nigerian factors, lead to an increased uh, excellence in performance and that we can guarantee the integrity of the, sec uh, the education and how the qualifications are obtained, then, Mr. Speaker and my honorable colleagues, I will throw my full support behind this. But I am persuaded by some of the arguments coming from the right honorable gentleman from Kassina, who is saying that this is already in existence. We may need to just align the two positions. Uh, it will be good to know why it has not been working uh, perhaps there are other extenuating factors that we may not be aware. It's a good motion. I'm happy that it's on the floor today, but I think we may still need to subject this to a little bit more of a legislative uh, investigation to take a, an informed decision. I so submit. Rahim Alajide, I represent Lagos Midland, Lagos State, Lagos State. I have listened attentively to the mover of the motion, and as well listened to others who have contributed. And we have to allow the wisdom to prevail in this circumstance. We are talking about grammar or the legislative aspect of this motion. I can say it's good, but we have to be very careful. And if Namdas, I just said something. So if you have first class in Hausa language, or you have first class in Igbo language, you have first class in Yoruba language, does that mean you are automatically qualified for? people who have to work in order any other subject, what will bring the value of what you have to the system, to our community, to our society is very, very important. If you are talking about skill, technology, science, medical, I think that will be even much more preferable. That's number one. Number two, now you are not trying to move a motion that we allow Minister of Education to take as, as important as anything, then the Minister of Education is not in, in charge of employment. We have Federal Character Commission and some other agencies and ministries. Are you now saying that we are too, going to compel all those who are? We have to think about it very well before we pass this so that it will not speak against us in future. We must allow words of reasoning and force of wisdom to prevail in this circumstance. Thank you very much. We all lived with the, an era, and we still, we still live with it, where, where first-class students, all bright students are given scholarship. And sometimes they even have to take an exam. Is there any difference between that and this motion? Because you are you're also discriminating between whatever you, if you, if, Yes. I think when Nemdas was here, I shared some of the points that he possibly raised. And I appreciate the move of the motion. But I think I would tell the line of my brother that this motion needs to be given another thought uh, so that we can, can come up with the base. Your Excellency, somebody with engineering and then somebody coming out to graduate I'm sorry to say medical and other sciences, cannot be compared in terms of the technical need and importance of what we have today, the challenges we have in this world. 
with somebody graduating in Hausa with distinction or first class. What we need today is technological advancement. Even the scholarship you refer to, Your Excellency, it is not every area of endeavor and courses that are giving scholarship to go out and study to go and study. The areas of giving are in the sciences and technology. And this is what it would require to move the nation. Uh, I, I wholeheartedly agree to the submission. And I will tell you, Your Excellency, I'm a victim of some of the things that happen. I saw somebody, I, I want to give a little narration of what happened to me in a course we call it material studies. I wish Solomon is here because we were in the same class with him. I had a textbook of that particular course. And it was verbatim the person that lifted and gave, gave us an assignment. Your Excellency, at the end of the day, I got 11 and a half over 20. The people that copied for me had 19 and a half over 20. <laughs> and I approached the teacher as to what really happened. Can you show me? And I spoke to the person in the very language you would understand that I'm here as a senior person from my own establishment. I want to go back and be responsible. By the time the person went through the script, he couldn't show me one space that was wrong. And I, said, I now said to the person, this is something you copied from a social book. You mean that? I say yes. Can you show me the book? I brought the book to today. I don't have that book. I miss the book. I miss the marks. I'm saying, if someone Solomon Mare is here, he can attest to it. We're in the same class with him. Two people. And then the issue of these points he raised, I also suffer from it. In another course, I got 74.5. 100. To get 75 will have given me A. Mathematically, you can approximate down. That teacher, again, another teacher, denied me that summary. And before me, increased another person's mark by five. So it is not always that the result that is out there is a true reflection of the knowledge, sir. I don't believe in that. Because I suffered from this injustice. And I'm giving that any of my classmates can be a witness and attest to that. I got disenchanted at the end of the day. I want to tell you, sir, sincerely speaking, that it is not all that's in the academic that represent what is in the head. The head is different, and we have that. That those who will come with this kind of very wonderful result at the end of the day, nothing to show, and they can't compete with you. I believe in ourselves. I believe in the country. And again, apart from this issue of our science and what is the need of the country, I'm, I'm also, it used to be automatic for the institutions, I think not the civil service, is the institutions that offer automatic employment, reason to attract the best brain. It goes win out, nobody wants to, if you graduate with first class, somebody's going to NNPC, is drawing maybe uh, uh, 500,000, uh, 800,000 in, in a month. Then you are left in the academic circle to take 120,000 Naira. It's because of what happened from 1992 when Babangida started the, this uh, 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 putting salary structure according to agencies and institutions that it no longer became attractive. And so we lost the fame, we lost the attraction, and no person, sir, I will tell you, if you are a first class person, that you will graduate. You will be looking for interest, industry, uh, and they will be looking for you, well and gas, to employ you. So this could be part of the reason. And I will beg, instead of throwing the motion, no, let's throw the line of the two, step down the motion, carry out more research as to what, why, why, why it's not happening. But I will not subscribe that somebody will go and read history and, and social studies. They will say automatic employment. No, sir. We have to, we have to, we have to divide. We have to differentiate. Thank you, sir. Well, let me just say this. Um, let us accept or not accept that. One, we need the best brains in Nigeria. Is, is, is that a yes or no? And I think yes, we do. Any country does. Two. 
If we answer that in the affirmative too, we now ask ourselves, are we aware or are we in denial that there are people, the best brains, you can apply for a job and you're a first class student and you don't get it, but a third class student gets the job based on either nepotism or whatever it is. Does that happen? Okay. So if that happens, who suffers? It's the country that suffers when that happens. So the question I'm asking is this. If we know that that kind of thing happens, whether it's NMPC, whether it's aviation, whether it's Ministry of Justice, no, no, whether it's Ministry of Justice, sometimes you get people getting in and the person who actually can do the job cannot get in. And I think that is what his motion is seeking to address. My question is this now, as important as this is, because I think it's important, do we even address it by way of motion? Or is it possible to bring a very well-crafted law that now addresses some of the issues that are the, the, the concerns of others that, okay, you're, you're a first class in Hausa, how does that help uh, another institution? Where the finer details, such as, such as relevant employment or relevant institution, can now be couched into the law, as opposed to leaving it, oh, if you're a first class in Igbo language or in Yoruba language, you can get your admission anywhere. I agree with that. That's why I don't think a motion will address this, but I think it's still uh, something that can either go and then come back as well through a, a motion, because you can't enforce a motion anyway. The right of reply. Go ahead. I represent Boniwa, Krika Sama, with the Federal Consumer, Mr. Speaker, I'm from Jigao State. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, except for the sake of just emphasis. What the motion seeks to achieve is already been achieved, implemented informally. Mostly first class graduates and two one, second class upper, are offered automatic employment by the departments where they graduated from. In the academia, yes, in the academia. And still, in various organizations, they don't take a lot of time to get employed. Once they apply, attend interview, and they are found to be sound, they are taken before other graduates. And that's why, except if we are just doing it for sake of emphasis, I think it is better for us to leave, this at, uh, to leave it as it is. Can you say for a fact yes, sir. that if somebody applies to a ministry yes. and is a first class student, that ministry will take it before a third class? Can you say that for a fact? No, I, I cannot give an ironclad guarantee. And can, I cannot give an. Bureaucracies, bureaucracies normally they are reactionary. Bureaucracies are reactionary. They don't appreciate intellect. And that's why we're here, to make them appreciate it. That's what we're doing here. Yeah, but if you, you've just admitted that sometimes they don't, but that's, what we, that's our job here, to make sure that they do. Are you done? No, to me, it's my turn. No, 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 let me, it's my turn. All the people of the Tango Federal Constituency are from Edo State. I want to appreciate all that have spoken. You have all spoken like fathers. Whether those that make reference to corruption and those that feel that uh, it should be professionalized. But the issue here is that first class is a fit when it comes to the feet of academics. It's not easy to come by, whether in history, whether in Hausa, that you read mercy doesn't mean that somebody 
who has come out in a fly color in Yoruba is not an academician or he has not made an achievement. Let us not restrict this thing to various fields. All of us, we are not created the same way. We all, God has given us in different areas, in different fields. We all have our different gifts. What is important here now is that you enter Nigeria, you discover that people who have struggled to come out in flying colors, they, like, they, are, they are roaming the streets as if nothing happened. In the process, we are not encouraging others to be studious or to take academic very seriously. If somebody makes first class in Hausa, he can rise to become a professor in Hausa, he will be lecturing it. But let us look at this motion very critically. There is no crime in surplusage, even if it's already existing. And this motion is to emphasize it, to reply it so that Nigeria will know that our children that have achieved at least should be considered so that it will encourage others to, to it will serve as an impetus for them to now study hard. So if uh, Esther can make the first class and is given automatic, some people will be encouraged. Under corruption, there are always very few. It's not everybody that will make for class corruptly. Those that will make for class corruptly, they are very, very insignificant. So please, let us look at this motion very critically. Let them just, just throw it away. It's something that will encourage our people. And our people, they are watching us debating this thing. Please, they are our children. And if they are performed, let us find a way of accommodating them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The way to get employment. I am aware that even international organizations, when they hear of uh, the exploits of some of our students and the material they are, or how smart and clever they are, they seek them out here. So you are not wanted in your home or you are not appreciated, your first class material, but somebody else out there is poaching you. So we need to look at this thing holistically. We'll take the whip. <laughs> yes, okay. okay. The whip, yes, and then the, we go revert to... I uh, represent Marte Mogunong, the Federal Constituency of Bono State. Mr. Speaker, as rightly alluded to by you, our motion or the resolution that is sought to be passed by way of motion today is purely persuasive in nature. And it was against this backdrop that you advise that the sponsor of this motion should come by way of a bill so that there will be a law guiding it to have a coercive instrument of enforcement where there is breach or violation. Mr. Speaker, against this backdrop, I want to support this motion in as much as there is a policy in existence of giving automatic employment to first class graduates, especially within the academia. But when it comes to the civil service and other ministries, the uh, department and agencies of government, all of us are Nigerians. We know what is happening. So there is the need for us, for at least for now, pass this motion by way of a resolution so that we'll send out the right messages. And then for the sponsor to come with a bill that will be passed into law and it will have a coercive effect for its enforcement. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, fish and oil test, of course. But the need and the, the, what the society require, and this is what we're supposed to be aggregating. Even in our appropriation, we we'll look at areas of need Every agency of government is important. But you know that you don't give the same allocation to every sector. This isn't being because of our need. If today we have people who will go and develop agriculture sector so that we can have food security, fine, we'll look into that direction and improve. Those who will be in the, the economy sector that will improve and bring us both foreign earnings will into that sector. Your Excellency, I, I, am, I, I, I am not in any way looking down upon, but I'm saying as a parliament, we need to put issues and things that will promote and in, improve on the quest for those who are seeking for knowledge to know the relevance of what they are doing. 
we, we are talking of margin uh, departments of government. And then we are now we are saying, no, oh, every other person, you can go to the entity. Why are we trying to match government agencies? It's because we want to reduce the expenditure to look at what will come to us as the basic need of the country, not wastes. And it's part of our own constitutional responsibility to ensure that it's not waste. Even in approving courses, sir, when institutions are established, they are not given the first, uh, the first brink. If I have a university technology, why do I have a university technology? Why do I encourage people to go and technological and sciences to come and do what? Sir? Those areas they are talking about that people are picking. They are not picking them because of the, 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 the possible demand power here. They are picking them because our own pay system, I mentioned it. Somebody graduating with first class in engineering, medicine, they are paying him 120,000 naira, 200,000 naira. In the oil and gas, within your own sector, and I'll give you an example, DPR before, a diploma holder would be earning 300,000 naira. How do you expect somebody like that to stay? We, had the, we have the best brains, I want to believe so, in medicine, in engineering, and in every other sector from Nigeria. They are not moving out because there is no work. No, the opportunities here is not the same. And this is one other area that one. possibly the parliament needs to come and look through heavily. If we do that, we'll be able to solve this problem. But a blanket, I want to say too, even within the sector of the federal sector, I share the character. Ploy that is there, easy prey to these international uh, companies. I think it's um, uh, something that, uh, well, you know, we, we, we are here to secure the, uh, for the uh, welfare of our, of our people. And I think it's not good that somebody will burn the candle lights, midnight oil, day in, day out for years. And at the end of the day, he's thrown out on the street, he cannot get a job. Yes, NMPC and so many agencies look for the best. But I can tell you that if you go to those agencies as well, you will see people with third class or ordinary pass. Whereas those who have done much better, they'll tell them, they, they don't even look at their CV. They just say, we're not employing. But meanwhile, you've heard them say they're employing backdoor. I, I hear it all the time. On the people that, the way they construct their English, they use like they didn't go through school or whatever. Yes, I agree. But I don't think an institution will just say, okay, you got a first class, come and work with us. They will still, you will still go through an interview process. They will still go through vetting. They will still talk to you, verbal interview, written interview. What, what this motion does is that it's, it allows you a door, a foot in the door, rather. Uh, you, 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 you hear people say, what have you done for me lately? I think Nigeria should start doing things for, for the students, especially encouraging them. But like Honorable Mongonu said, maybe this should come by way of law so that we can streamline it. And areas of concern we can address. I who was trying to say something now. Abegunde. Honorable Leki Abegi, this is my name. I represent the good people of the Abafera constituency. I'm from Kogi State. I want to align with uh, Honorable Johnson, Oguma, and, um, and uh, no, not, not Babangida. Um, sir, there are some degrees that are graded. Like MBBS, that is Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery. They upgraded. So this motion didn't capture that particular discipline. And other discipline, I think of pharmacy. So you should look at it. MBBS is not graded. There's no first class. There is no second class. MBBS is MBBS. Then I want to speak of the motion. The motion is talking majorly about MDAs. And 
Mr. Speaker is very right. If you go to NMPC, you see a lot of people with disciplines that are not relevant to that uh, industry, that they don't have any, they didn't study anything related to it. I want to say this, is not maybe I'm chairman customs. If you see the current recruitment that they are doing, the replacement, they specifically requested the discipline they want, that if you don't study this, because we are mostly using computer now to do our job, you must do this, you must do that. So if you are not in that area, even though if you apply, you will not be taken. So I want to just in maybe a way of amendment to remove the word automatic from the employment of uh, first class graduates. It can be like giving them consideration because it's not every first class, as the deputy speaker said, that are the best. Maybe if they put them to test, you can even see second uh, class upper that is better than first class. So, but they can give them consideration and then they pass through test before they are given that employment. Not just maybe you come out first class, you just give you automatic. There must be a procedure before you have been employed. But I believe we need them more in the ministries and department. That's why our ministries are not working. That's why the MDAs are not working. Because the people there, they are incompetent, most of them. If you check properly, that is how they are. So please, I would beg of us for this motion to pass. Thank you, Honorable Colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Move out the motion. I remain Honorable Emeka Chinedu. I represent the good people of Ayaz and Bises in the federal constituency. Mr. Speaker, I am from Imo State. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank everybody who has spoken either for this motion, in favor of this motion, or against this motion. Mr. Speaker, this motion is a straightforward motion. What this motion is simply saying is that we should encourage hard work. I'm surprised some people are saying, uh, does it mean if somebody has a first, first class in Yoruba, uh, then you give him employment? Mr. Speaker, for you to have a first class, whether in civil language or in whatever uh, language or in whatever course, you must have put in a very hard work for, to earn you a first class. And Mr. Speaker, the, an institution does not just issue you a first class. They go through rigorous process before you are awarded a first class degree. It's not only you just say, I can, I can understand the analogy of uh, the DS. That, that, that could be error from your institution. But a lot of students go through a lot of hard work to end first class. And before I move this motion, Mr. Speaker, I made a lot of research from my constituents. I found out that a lot of first class, first class graduates are unemployed. They are all over the street, roaming without employment. But you see a third class graduate and with, who, who earns a lot of money under, uh, uh, under uh, 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 some president. They are duly employed, leaving the first class students on, on the street. So, Mr. Speaker, the idea of this motion is to encourage hard work. If somebody graduates in the first class, with the first class, it would be good that we encourage such persons with automatic employment. Somebody is saying that it has been there before, but as I speak to you today, a lot of first class students are unemployed. So, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I will beg that we we'll allow this motion to go through as a, a, a way of rewarding hard work for some of the unemployed first class graduates we have in the country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Those in been on this for almost an hour. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those against, please say nay. Do you want me to repeat it? <laughs> the eyes have it. The ninth order of the day.